come along with us today for the final video in our series on our trip from New Mexico and Texas. Today we're visiting Guadalupe Mountains National Park. We're going to show you around and we're going to take you along with us while we hike to the Devil's Hall. First, we're going to stop at the visitor center to ask a few questions to the ranger. It's pretty windy. We want to make sure that it's reasonable to do the hike we had planned today. Hey everybody, we're at the Guadalupe Mountains National Park and we're um, enjoying a very windy day. It's about 50 some degrees, so it's fairly warm, but the wind is just howling here. So we're taking a quick stop here to look at the Frijoles Ranch. So this was built by the Raider Brothers in 1876 and they built the house about 40 feet from the spring that's here. So eventually the brothers that built the ranch moved on in the late 1800s and then the Herring family moved in. Um, they stayed there until about 1895 and then in 1906 uh, the Smith family came and they actually um, started doing farming here. Um, they expanded the ranch, they added a kitchen and two bedrooms, a little schoolhouse was built. Um, at some point in the park history, this is actually used, uh, rangers would live here, um, but at this point it's only operating as a museum. And we're gonna keep going down the little trail here to take you and show you the Manzanita Spring. So this Manzanita Spring Trail, it's just a 0.5 mile um, out and back trail. It starts right near the ranch area. It's just a wide pool that's here year round. Um, they said it's good for bird watching. And then if you wanted to continue, you could go on to the um, Smith Spring Trail. We're not gonna do that because we wanna spend most of our time hiking the Devil's Hall Trail. We were really impressed with just the beautiful views of the mountains. Um, the ruggedness of this place, just every direction you look, there's something um, beautiful to look at. And we really didn't know what to expect for this national park. You know, some of the parks are, you hear about them more, they're more hyped up. I wasn't sure what to expect from this park, but it really exceeded all of our expectations and we really ended up enjoying this park. So we've reached the spring area. It's a very pretty little body of water with tall grasses around it. From what we've seen driving around in this environment, there isn't a lot of water to be found. So this is a rare sight and it's very pretty to see. Alright, so we're on the Devil's Hall Trail. We talked to a ranger who let us know that the gusting winds wouldn't be that bad up in this trail and there's definitely ways to get out of the wind a little bit when you get on certain sections. We're going to give it a go here. Uh, there definitely are still wind gusts, but the temperature is pretty nice. We'll see how this goes. So we knew going into this trip, visiting in January, we were going to have less crowds. Um, we were not going to have to deal with hot weather, but we knew that this is the windy season here at Guadalupe Mountains. So from November through about March, there are winds above 30 miles per hour often, and there can be gusts from 50 to 80 miles per hour. So we knew that this was going to be something we were going to have to deal with. We knew the wind was going to be a factor. Um, so if you visit during this time period, just keep that in mind. Okay, so here at Guadalupe Mountains, um, the park has eight of the 10 highest peaks in Texas. So there's some really fantastic hiking. Um, due to the wind, 
we heard the ranger talking to people that were trying to do some of the higher mountain trails and he was saying that the wind was having people turn back so that is just not in the cards for us today with how the wind is and having the kids with us but a realistic hike for us is devil's hall so we talked to the ranger we feel good about this one um the sign at the beginning says it's a moderate trail but recently the national park service has updated this to a strenuous trail due to the rock scrambling and the loose rock surfaces. This is a 4.2 mile um, round trip out and back trail. Okay, so we've reached the point at the Devil's Hall Trail when we're gonna go up the rock scramble, the wash here. So we're gonna show you what it's like. It looks pretty tough. So when you reach the point in the trail that you get to this rock scramble, um, the river wash here, there's no official trail at this point. Um, you know, you're just to continue up the wash. There's no path to show you which way to go. It's kind of like you look at the rocks and you judge, hey, which one can I get over the easiest and which looks like the path of least resistance. Now our kids, they're like mountain goats. They're just like hopping from rock to rock and like they're just loving this. Um, it's super easy for them. My husband and I are like, oh, we don't want to twist an ankle here. So we went a little bit slower. Go that way, it's easier. <laughs> This is it. So as you continue on up the trail, you just follow the wash. There are some sections where you'll see a trail come off to the side and you can actually get out of the rocks for a little bit. So that ends up taking you right back in. So the relief is uh, short lived here. Obviously this is not the kind of hike where you can do um, in rainy or wet conditions. You only want to do this hike when it's dry because it's tricky enough as it is. Uh-huh. Yep, that's exactly, you're gonna skirt the edge there and go over. So at this point, you kind of have two options. You can go down and kind of climb the rocks like a staircase, um, but they're really narrow, not a lot of room to put your feet. Or you can do like my daughter and I did and kind of skirt the edge here to make your way over. We felt that this was the best way because you had something to hold on to. There's a small pool of water in the rocks and there were little tiny birds getting a drink from it. You keep climbing up these rock-like stairs, making your way through. The views start to be incredible at this point. The tall mountains, the way the sun was shining on them. Um, it's just really exciting. You're getting to the payoff of the hike and we're almost at the end here. <laughs> it's yeah, it's really cool. So we are warned by the ranger as we come through this area to keep an eye out for these non-native sheep. They often hear people and get scared and try to run away and they happen to kick the rocks down sometimes into the canyon. So we said, just be very careful, keep an eye out. We haven't seen anything like that, but we're being cautious. Guys, this place is really neat. Yeah. Same for you. So we were just in awe of seeing all the different rock layers, all the rock formation. Um, you look up at the rock walls and there's all these prickly pear cactus growing out of them. Just such a cool place. All right, folks, we've made it to the end of the trail. This is the Devil's Hall. So this is just a narrow canyon made of all these different layered rocks. It's super neat looking. 
Um, you can kind of go down to the end and see what's out on the other side, like my kids are doing. I've had enough rock climbing. I'm going to stay right here and enjoy the view. Really cool. Okay, so Devil's Hall Trail is fantastic. I highly recommend this one if you're in Guadalupe Mountains. Um, my teenagers loved it, my husband loved it. I liked it. It's a little tricky with the rock scramble, but it's amazing. And we only saw one other family on the trail. It's definitely um, not the most popular hike, I'd say. We love Guadalupe Mountains. We love Carlsbad Cavern and we love White Sands. We highly recommend this trip idea to see the three parks in one trip. It was fantastic. And if you thought the only adventures in our video would come from the hiking trail, stay tuned to hear about how our flight home went. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a little update on how the rest of our trip went. So if you've been following along, um, we visited White Sands, we visited Carlsbad Caverns, and then we visited Guadalupe Mountains. We had an awesome time. Um, every one of the parks was like beautiful. Kids were great. Um, we loved the hikes we did. We had beautiful warm weather. Um, but the end of our trip, we were supposed to fly home on Monday, Martin Luther King Day. And the plan was, you know, our kids had a long weekend off school and we wanted them to be back in school for Tuesday. So we had a 6.30 flight out and we woke up early in the morning to get ready to catch our flight and we got a notification that our flight was canceled. Um, and this was because the winter weather that has hit like the Dallas, Texas area, and then also the winter weather that was on the East Coast. So American rebooked us. Um, so we had to fly from El Paso to Phoenix and then back to Philly where we're from. And then we got a notification that that flight was canceled, the flight from El Paso to Phoenix. So at that point we called American Airlines again and they had a flight that we could get on if we were able to get ourselves to Midland, Texas. So we took our rental car and we were getting ready to drive the four hours to Midland, Texas. We got about 60 minutes into the drive and we got another notification that the flight was canceled. So at that point we called American Airlines again and they had another flight they could put us on from El Paso. So we had to, at that point, drive 60 minutes back to El Paso um, where ultimately we were uh, routed to Phoenix and then we had a five hour layover in Phoenix um, you know, at this point we were all tired. We made the best of it. We took the kids into like a local five below, got them some candy, got them some books and toys and things. Um, they're teenagers, so like they're pretty good, but just a few things to make it a little more bearable. And then we ended up paying our way into the airport lounge at the Phoenix airport. And that ended up being really nice. We were able to sit in comfier chairs. We had access to watch the Eagles game. Unfortunately, they lost. Um, but it made it a little more bearable to wait five hours at the airport. And then thankfully we were able to get our flight from Phoenix back to Philly and we ended up getting back at 6.15 in the morning on Tuesday and we land only to find out that our kids have a snow day on Tuesday. So that really worked out great that everybody was able to come home and get some much needed sleep because we had been up for a long time. So I just wanted to tell you this story because, you know, sometimes you watch a YouTube video and it looks like, Everything's picture perfect, and we had a great time. We really did. We had the best time, but I just wanted to keep it real and show you like some, some of the stuff that you don't hear about and some of the behind the scenes that goes into some of these trips. And we had snowy weather. It's bound to happen that our flight got rescheduled that many times, um, so it just is what it is, and we're just used to it. When you travel, sometimes crazy things happen. But I wanted to share that story with all of you. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're keeping warm. Um, we're supposed to get more snow here on Friday in Philadelphia. Bye.